Welcome to episode 203 of Clarity Compressed. I'm Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. First episode of 2022. And we're going to talk a little bit about tolerance. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right. Starting off 2022 right. We got a lot of things going on this year. Had a lot going on last year in 2021. Can you believe it is over? I'm sure, like me, many of you were ready for 2021 to be over. And now it is so. And we have a full, fresh bag of whole bean 2022 ahead of us. We get to decide what we do with 2022. I mean, look, it, December is a month. January is a month. December 31st is a 24-hour day. January 1st is a 24-hour day. Right? There really is no difference in, like, the experience of time. However, you know but the feeling of a blank slate, the feeling of, you know, you've just cleaned your room or cleaned your workspace and you're like, okay, now I can start fresh. Has anyone ever started a new email inbox? You're like, yes, I can start fresh. I don't have all this crap attached to it. I don't have all this spam, right? I get to start fresh. Don't give this email address to anyone. Well, the new year is kind of like that for me. At least I feel like that. I feel like this is a new opportunity. This is a chance to do it the way I want to do it without carrying some of the baggage of the way I had done it in the past, and I wish that I didn't do it. So the first podcast, this is really my first piece of content, long-form content re released in 2022, or made for 2022, I guess. I'm going to talk about tolerance. As I thought about 2021 and 2020, right, there was just this amazing weight on my chest, on so many of you. There was a weight on our culture. There was a weight on our society, and friction and tension and, you know, intolerance and hate and venom and pressure, 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 pressure. We all felt it. Maybe we all still feel it. We will feel it again, right? This 2022, it's like people haven't changed, right? Culture hasn't changed overnight. However, I do feel like we have a fresh perspective or we can have a fresh perspective and we have a fresh chance to do it a little differently this year. And um, this post is from a pastor I follow in New York City. His name is Tim Keller, Timothy Keller. And uh, hit a post on Instagram. It was one of the first things I saw one morning. And I wanted to share it here and wanted to encourage you to kind of take this trip with me. Here's what the post says. It says, tolerance is not approving an opinion you do not hold. That's not what tolerance is. It's treating the person who's saying what you can powerfully disagree with, with humility respect, and love. I think there, there's this element and there's this perception of tolerance as I'm tolerant of you if I agree with all of your positions. I agree with everything you believe in and that makes me tolerant. That is not the truth. That is a lie. That is something that people try to force you into so that they can feel better about their position or feel justified in their position. But if you play that tape to the end for a second, just play that tape to the end for a second. If that really is what tolerance is about, then we're all in big, 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 big trouble. Because I can't believe in everything you believe in. You can't believe in everything I believe in. It is impossible. And if we did that, we'd have such a homogenous, um, emotionless, you know, textureless culture. Because culture is about the dissonance, Right. Culture, why do people love and talk about New York City and the culture of the city and the diversity of the city? Why do we talk about that? Well, it's not because we all have the same belief system. It's not because we all fully get in line with everything that everyone else believes in. No, texture is because of differences, right? Texture is because of nuance. It's because of contrast, right? Let me give you a little hint on taking pictures right now. Um, First of all, you can do a whole lot with just this, so don't get don't get too crazy. Taking pictures, when you take your picture, the contrast is incredibly important. Contrast, the differences between colors, between darks and lights. And if there is no contrast, then it's really boring. So when you take your next picture on your iPhone or your Android phone, I don't know what the setting is on Android, but if you take it on an iPhone, open up the settings, 
go into the contrast and the edit and just slide that sucker back and forth. And you watch what it does to your photo, right? And obviously taking good photo and framing it up, right? All that matters. But the contrast is what makes a photo interesting. The contrast is what makes a culture interesting. The contrast is what makes you and I connect because there's differences. So this does not mean that we can't be tolerant of one another's different beliefs. This doesn't mean that even though I, pow I might powerfully disagree with a position that you have on an issue or a perspective, I might powerfully disagree with it and be like, no way, I can get behind that. I am completely, I actually believe it's the opposite of what you think. Believe it power strongly, very strongly. And just because I do that, guess what? It doesn't mean I can't treat you with respect, humility, love, and we can't be friends. We can't even be, it doesn't even mean we can't be good friends because let me tell you a little secret. I'm really good friends with a whole lot of people whom I powerfully disagree with their positions on certain things. Powerfully. And guess what? Maybe they know it. Maybe they don't know it. But if they don't know it, it's not because I'm selling out. It's not because I'm not telling them about my position. It's because their main experience with me is one of respect and humility and love. Because if you approach every situation that you disagree with, with respect, humility, and love, guess what happens? Discourse, conversation. Then maybe you can even persuade somebody to see it from your perspective. And guess what? You might just be surprised that someone else persuades you to see it in their way. When someone that differs in opinion from me treats me with respect and humility and love, I can't help but be drawn into them to listen to what they're saying and perhaps be persuaded by their perspective. I made a post about that post that I read on LinkedIn last week. Um, and I do think that the professional community has a little bit of an edge here because business is kind of an equalizer in these things because business naturally rewards cooperation. It naturally rewards that. It actually naturally penalizes closed-mindedness. That doesn't mean someone can be closed-minded. They, they can and they are. But in business, that usually means you go out of business or your business doesn't grow or people don't listen to what you're saying and you lose influence. So I think business and like LinkedIn specifically has a little bit of an advantage because people are incentivized to cooperate and that incentivizes tolerance. Now that doesn't mean the heart behind the tolerance isn't motivated by financial gain or you know moving up the corporate ladder. It very well may be and in so many instances it is, but that doesn't mean we throw the baby out with the bathwater. What that means is we look at, well, in business, we have one thing going for us that helps us be more tolerant you know, as this definition says, treating someone who you powerfully disagree with with respect, humility, and love. Because business has this equalizing layer like a referee that goes, eh, you can do that, but I'm throwing the flag. Or if you play within the rules, actually you can keep playing the game. And then you have the opportunity to practice respect, humility, and love. So all of that being said, in 2022, I hope it marks this community, right? Anyone that's listening to the podcast, um, that, that we're connected personally, right? Anyone in, in my circle that I roll in, I hope that you will join me in trying to show the rest of the world, the rest of the business community, the rest of culture, right? It's a big statement. Our children, our neighbors, our associates, our coworkers, you know, our vendors, our customers, showing all those people what it is to be truly tolerant. Again, that doesn't mean that you need to agree with their position. Actually, what it means that you can treat those people whom you powerfully disagree with, with respect, humility, and love. I hope our 2022 is marked with respect, humility, and love. I have nothing but respect, humility, and love for you. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. I hope that our 2022 ride is amazing. I hope if we haven't met, we get to meet in person this year. Maybe this is the year. And if we do know each other, I hope we get to spend a little FaceTime together because let's be honest, I love FaceTime more than I love uh, digital FaceTime, which is great. But, you know, I want to shake hands, give hugs, uh, smile a little, laugh a little. And hopefully we get to do that in 2022. So much coming down the pike. And until next week, let's do it. Respect, humility, love. Talk to you soon.